foot, I'll kick bones. As long as I got a fist, I'll punch it. And as long as I've got a tooth, I'll bite it. And when I'm old and gray and toothless and bootless, I'll gum it till I go to heaven and booze goes to hell. Burt Lancaster was a movie star in the truest sense of the word. He had what the great director Billy Wilder called cinema magic. I should know, because I directed Burt Lancaster in five films. In a career that lasted nearly 50 years, Burt never really gave a bad performance. But I believe that one of his best was in Fred Zinnemann's From Here to Eternity. Zinnemann brought out Burt's magnetism and sexual appeal, touched on all of his strengths, and showed his vulnerable side. Karen, I'm no officer, I'm an enlisted man. I can't be anything else. If I tried to be an officer, I'd be putting on an act. I just can't do it. Please don't ask me why. The first movie I made with Burt Lancaster, The Young Savages, was a challenge. Since I had never worked with him, I had to prove myself. Now, we didn't always agree, but he didn't argue with me. He was, however, amazed by some of my camera angles. Everything worked out eventually, and we ended the picture cordially, but I didn't expect to work with him again. Much to my surprise, Asuma was. I was asked to take over the direction of Burden out of Alcatraz. This was a story I really wanted to make. First day I came here, you as much as asked me to give it down on my knees and whip her. I wouldn't do it then, I won't do it now. I won't lick your hand, and that's what eats you, ain't it, Keeper? Well, you keep this in mind. A man ain't whipped until he quits, and I'll never give you that pleasure. Burt, too, was passionate about the life of the Birdman, Robert Stroud. The two men had much in common. Both were rebels in their own way. Stroud fighting the prison system and Lancaster the studio system. Burt Lancaster was one of the first stars to have a successful independent company producing and starring in his own movies. The next film Lancaster and I worked on together was Seven Days in May. Kirk Douglas was originally set to play the general. But because Kirk wanted Burt Lancaster in the movie, we offered the better role to Burt. I wasn't too sure I wanted to work with Lancaster again, but Douglas convinced me. They played off each other perfectly. Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster were terrific professional rivals, and it was like watching two boxers sparring in the ring. Are you sufficiently up on your Bibles to know who Judas was? I suggest you read that letter, sir. It's from the president. I asked you a question. Are you ordering me to answer, sir? I am. Yes, I know who Judas was. He was a man I worked for and admired until he disgraced the four stars on his uniform. I think one of the best scenes I ever directed was between Bert and Frederick March in the presidential Oval office. Bert had been ill prior to this film, and he asked for extra rehearsals. March agreed, and it really paid off. I know you think I'm a weak sister, General. But when it comes to my oath of office, defending the Constitution of the United States... Somebody has to teach me how to salute a flag. Somebody has to teach you about the democratic processes that that flag represents. Don't you presume to take on that job, Mr. President. Because, frankly, you're not qualified. One thing that worked in Burt's favor throughout his career was his ability to play against type. On screen, he often came across as the most charming of men. But he could also express an alarming evil like in Alexander McKendrick's Sweet Smell of Success, Lancaster gave the character of J.J. Hunsinger a tremendously sinister quality, all with just a simple cold-eyed stare and menacing smile. You're a family man, Harvey, and someday, God willing, you may want to be president. And here you are, out in the open, where any hep person knows that this one is toting that one around for you. I took over the direction of the train as a favor to Bert. It turned out to be my favorite film with him. I learned more about stunts working with Bert Lancaster on the train than I would have in five careers without him. Nobody but Bert was good enough to double Bert. This scene was all Bert, and it was done in one shot.
He was one of the most coordinated human beings I've ever met. His early training as an acrobat gave him the discipline to keep his body in shape. God gave him the rest. Just Bert walking across a room was a thing of beauty. Director Richard Brooks was able to capitalize on Bert's bigger-than-life presence in El Gantry. The flamboyant role combined Bert's extreme physicality with keen wit and won him the Oscar. Any punk ball player can make a slide like that. But how many folks have got the guts to play ball on God's team? And listen to this, the captain of that team is Jesus Christ himself. God knows he was a handsome man. No actor ever looked so good. But there were brains behind that brilliant smile and confident physique. He was the most professional actor I have ever known, and there was not a phony bone in his body. Bert Lancaster taught me what the words friendship and loyalty meant. He walked the walk, and he talked the talk. What's wrong with dying? Because life's too precious a gift. That's why. He lived a noble life. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm John Frankenheimer.